Hello, I'm Matt Stump. And I'm Hannah Tudor. And welcome to CBU TV. Welcome back, Lancers. We're so excited to have students back on campus. To kick us off, for the first time since March 2020, the student body is back to in-person classes and activities, and the CBU Club Fair is looking to get students involved after a year and a half off. CBU TV reporter Ignacio Dominguez has more on this. After a long time, Club Fair made its way back onto campus, and I had the chance to speak to some students and some clubs about the return. Let's check it out. After nearly two years of students being online and campus life being put on hold due to the pandemic, events have slowly returned back to CBU. So I think it's super important, especially for the freshmen and sophomores, just coming out of the pandemic, not really being in contact with a lot of people, just getting out there. It's a great way to meet new people, kind of test the waters on like if you want to go into the career that you're looking into, um, maybe find something that you didn't know you were interested in, meet people that are in the same interest as you. like. It's, super, it's just a great way to meet people, get in contact with everybody at CBU. I think Club Day is so important because it allows people to get involved and meet people that they never thought that they would meet, get involved in things that they may not have known that they were interested in, and really give people a chance to find themselves. Just to create a type of community that we didn't have beforehand, I feel like since COVID happened, we're obviously, you know, creating an opportunity for people to come together and, you know, have some place to go to feel safe. Although browsing the club fair was one of the excitements, the biggest was the return of the CBU community to campus. It feels so good, you know, just to see a bunch of new faces, meet a bunch of new people and really get the CBU feel. Oh, it's hectic, but it's actually very enjoyable seeing everybody and all the smiling faces because that's what CBU is for. For CBU TV, I am Ignacio Dominguez. Thank you, Ignacio. September is Hispanic Heritage Month, a great time to honor and admire Hispanic heritage. Here at CBU, Diana Villa, CBU TV Assistant Director, went out and covered this celebration. Hola Lancers, yo soy Diana Villa y esto es Lancers Noticias. El mes de la herencia hispana es importante para celebrar y reconocer a hispanos alrededor de la nación. Esta celebración empieza el 15 de septiembre y termina el 15 de octubre. Yo tuve la oportunidad de entrevistar a varios estudiantes sobre la importancia del mes de la herencia hispana. Uh, mi nombre es Mónica Pérez. Susana Cruz. Me llamo Natalie. ¿Por qué es importante celebrar el mes de la herencia hispana? Uh, es importante porque yo soy cubano y ahorita con todo lo que está pasando en Cuba es muy importante uh, uh, celebrar lo que ya hemos, ya hemos hicido. Pues, pues mis papás vinieron a este país y trabajaron duro y ahora tienen todo lo que tienen. Um, yo creo que es importante celebrar el mes de la herencia hispana, una por no perder la tradición, uh, nuevas culturas, Um, que están creciendo, se están perdiendo los valores y las tradiciones. Entonces yo pienso que es responsabilidad de nosotros incorporarlos a las nuevas generaciones. Ellos trabajan mucho para este, um, pa para este país y este país corre porque nosotros, los hispanos, como nosotros, como una nación, estamos aquí para ayudar, no para um, deshacer o destruir este país. Es importante porque podemos conocer nuestro heritage y um, celebrarlo porque es una parte muy importante de nuestros países hispanos. ¿Sabe usted cómo celebran el mes de la herencia hispana? Uh, normalmente um, se celebra con platillos mexicanos, pozole, mole, um, mucha gente más fácil carne asada. Este, Música de mariachi es normalmente lo que se escucha. Muchos celebran haciendo comidas de sus pueblos, um, uh, también celebraciones en lo público, uh, celebrando con familia, con amigos también. Uh, pues sí, me encanta la comida cubana, pues el lechón y el flan y con gris. A mí me encanta el mole, que es de México, uh, y también el pozole. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos para Lancers Noticias. Yo soy Diana Villa. Such a great story. Thank you, Diana. Over the summer, the CBU baseball team capped off a terrific season by winning the WAC regular season championship, their second one since their transfer to Division I. CBU TV's assistant director, Wyatt Mitchison, sat down with head coach Gary Adcock to discuss the Lancers' success. 
Hello, I'm Wyatt Mitchison, and today I'm here with Gary Adcock, the head coach of the baseball team here at CBU. Coach, it's good to be here. Man, it's a great day. It's a beautiful day in Riverside. If I didn't live here, I'd move here. <laughs> it is a beautiful day, and right behind us, I think something that maybe beats the view, two regular season WAC championships. Coach, you've had some time to sit on it and reflect and celebrate. How'd you do it? Oh, man. You know, so many people uh, contribute to something like that. I mean, it, it was a special group. It was a special group that, that just really came together and stuck together and were supportive from the training staff to the administration, you know, to the assistant coaches and all the people, sports information, everybody coming together to help us uh, create a, a special moment. And once again, we waited till the last day. So I wish we could get them done a little sooner and not have the uh, stress of the uh, – win or lose last game, but it makes for an exciting drama. It does make for a, a lot of exciting drama. And uh, one thing is we met back in, in 2019 when you won your first one. And I remember talking to you and you know, I said, hey, you know, I can't wait to see this, to see the next one. You know, it took a, took a few years the, with the canceled season and everything but you guys you guys really rallied together uh, we also talked back in april and i remember you said quote you said you know we're we're not scoring enough runs we have too many three two games we, we need we need to get going on that end and you guys got you got going from april 9th to the end of the season you outscored your opponents 215 runs 148 runs what was it that practice after because you said hey we're heading out right now to work on it what was it that got the bats going for the rest of the season you know we started off really hot i mean we were, we were hot and we we're at front and we we're at the top of the pack in the league and then the dixie series was a low point um you know dixie's a quality opponent somebody that we're used to but we just got dominated at times at the plate in that series um and came away thinking that offensively we weren't doing our best so to answer your question we reset our two-strike approach um, we just had a, uh, a very, um, what's the word, animated, forceful, uh, aggressive meeting on what we were going to do differently, two strikes, a little shake you up meeting, and kind of made some demands on them. Hey, if we don't see this, then we're going to have to make changes to the lineup. And the guys responded well. Sometimes when you challenge people, um, they they go backwards. Um, and But this particular group, when we challenged them, they went forward. And I think from that point on, Utah Valley on, we just started hitting a lot better with two strikes and committing to putting the ball in play and, and not striking out and kind of pushing the ball around the field move. Love seeing our sports succeed. Shang-Chi is the newest movie in Marvel Universe. CBU TV reporter Elmer Mejia Sagastume took to campus for this segment of Lancers on the Street, asking Lancers what they thought about the film. What is up, Lancers? This is Elmer Mejia Sagastume with CBU TV. Marvel continues to wow audiences with their TV shows and movies. This includes Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. I had a chance to ask a few students about their thoughts on the film. Let's see what they had to say. I feel like the action scenes were good, very well choreographed, good, good writing for the most part, I think. Um, it was very enticing to watch the movie from beginning to end, learning about the character and seeing his backstory, where he came from and why he randomly got attacked on the bus, because that's what you know really brought the interest into the movie for me. But um, yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, uh, I gave the movie like an eight out of 10 too. Uh, probably not as great as details of Richard Sermon too. too. Uh, but I'm more thinking of like rewatchability and like overall entertainment. Um, that like he said, the, the, the fighting and the CGI in it were like really good and like, it was like, dang, that looks, mm. just gives that, that extra oomph that you get from like watching the movie and seeing like the, the fighting scenes. Because in Marvel movies, it's more of just like their abilities rather than like their like innate abilities, I guess, like with like fighting and, karate and like the karate, taekwondo. Like. One thing that stood out about the movie was its decision to have a majority of the cast be of Asian descent. I asked a student how he felt about the Asian representation within the film. I thought it was... I thought it was appropriately done in a way because, well, they got people that were fluently, that were fluent in Mandarin, right? Instead of just, you know, 
relying on, you know, sometimes old f- films had gibberish, really, right? So I thought, you know, getting people that are fluent in Mandarin, and not only that, because, you know, it was an Asian film, they had to try to get Asian representation in every way, but they didn't make it totally reliant on just an a- Asian audience. I liked the Cheng Shi's friend. Um, she was an Asian who didn't know Mandarin, right? And I thought that was like a really nice addition because it, it took us a step back into, you know, um, was it inclusion? Because now all the audience can really relate to a character here. It's not just Asians because now we have someone that's also struggling with just the um, cultural barrier around them. And so I thought it was really well done, really balanced out. Thank you for tuning in, Lancers. For CBU TV, I am Elmer Mejia Sagasume. Matt, didn't you see the movie? Yes, I did. I saw it on opening night, and I think it's an interesting intro- uh, introduction into the MCU for that character. Looks like I need to go to theaters. Phoebe Arevalo is our 2021 to 2022 ASCBU president. Along with other important roles on campus, she is transforming student life with her acts of service and amazing leadership skills. Reporters Marquise Brown sat down with Phoebe to ask how she is living her purpose. Yeah, so on campus, I'm a very busy person. And I don't, I don't, it didn't start at CBU. I've always been a very busy person since like middle school, high school. I've always had a busy schedule. And at CBU, it's continued and it's allowed me to flourish more. Phoebe is very involved and she's involved on and off campus and like also very involved in her like family. So I feel like it's kind of hard to like balance being a student and then still making time for your family. But it really just seems like Phoebe knows how to balance it all, to be quite honest. (laughs) Being at CBU has been a struggle as a minority because I came from a high school that was predominantly Hispanic two universities where I was perhaps the only brown person or minority in the classroom. So that was always hard and I really had to learn to um, figure out who I was going to be. Was I going to be the person in the back of the classroom who didn't really talk and just kind of went for classes and that was it? Or was I going to be myself? Because one way or another I stick out like a sore thumb. (laughs) It's really hard to be a student and still have a social life, but I think that she makes it look effortless, even though she's like one of my closest friends here at CBU and I know it's not effortless, but she makes it look that way. And that's something that I just aspire to be, is like have that equal balance of work and play. And I think PB does a good job at that. So I'm still involved in the music program. I've been playing clarinet for, I wanna say 14 years. <laughs> um, so it's been quite a while, not that great, but I, you know, I play and I do it, enjoy it. It's a great hobby of mine. I get to meet some amazing people. The School of Music ha- is so talented. CB has so many talented musicians here on campus. And it's great to see them grow and learn as individuals and in their, in their talent. It's great to form a safe space for all my Hispanics and know that they have a space where they can be themselves and just you know, feel understood and welcomed. So that's been amazing. Um, I've been, we've been working on an ama- a lot of amazing things to have get them involved, but also um, educate the CBU community on the Hispanic culture. I'm also ACBU president this year. ACBU has been an organization that's been really close to my heart in that I've been able to serve students and help make their experiences here at CBU a great experience and kind of like the best years of their lives. Because that's what we want to do. I mean, you're coming to college, you're only here once, so you want to make the most of it. You want to take advantage and get to get involved because you can't come back. So if we can make these years some of the best years of your life, then that's, we've done our job. Like we've had great presidents before and everything, but like none of them have been Phoebe. Everyone's their own person. Everyone's their own leader. But Phoebe is so unique and so different from presidents that we've had in the past. And you know, she's been doing a whole lot more and like not to like down talk anyone, but you know, she's going out there making those connections with different offices and like encouraging me to do the same thing. But it's more of this like, we're all in this together. We're gonna do it. We're gonna make it happen. This is one team. We're united keep going and keep hustling because although it can be hard it's not impossible no matter how hard we work 
God's going to provide a way and he's going to make a way for us to get in, to succeed, and make a difference. Because at the end of the day, it's not for me. It's for God. It's for his people. We are so lucky to have Phoebe serving as our ASCVU president. The Academy Museum of Motion Pictures is opening up in Los Angeles on September 30th. CBU TV director Ivania Montes got a sneak peek at the cinematic experience. Ever dream about hearing your name getting called for an Oscar? As you can see, I have. Well, make sure you have those acceptance speeches ready because here at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, you can experience just that. But the fun doesn't stop there. The museum offers a variety of exhibitions and programs for all type of movie lovers. We know the Academy Museum will become an instant landmark in Los Angeles, a must-see destination for residents and visitors alike. We will be the world's premier museum dedicated to the arts and the sciences of movies. The museum is a 300,000 square foot complex filled with cinematic artifacts, just like these iconic ruby red slippers. Jacqueline Stewart, Chief Artistic and Programming Officer, gives us more information. I work with the curatorial team on all of our exhibitions. I work with the publication team on our catalogs. We're a publisher as well as a museum of physical objects. I also work with the programming teams on all of our film screenings and public programs. Stewart is just one of the many members in the Dream Team that have made this all happen. Anna Kendrick, Don Hudson, and David Rubin, along with Renzo Piano and Academy Museum trustee Tom Hanks, are also behind the magic. I'm very moved to be able to say to you, finally, at last, boy howdy hey, welcome to the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, and thank you all very much for being here. The museum is set to open its doors to the public on Thursday, September 30th. Prices on tickets may vary depending on your own personal experience, but tickets start at $25 for general admission to the museum and $10 for public programs and film screenings. We hope that people will get a sense of all the work and all of the love that goes into filmmaking. Filmmaking is a collaborative enterprise and we see the actors on screen. We often know a lot about the directors, sometimes the writers, but to think about how the costume designers and the production designers and the location managers and all the people who craft what it is that we see on screen. I hope that movie lovers come away with a deeper appreciation for all of those crafts and that they learn something about films they had never heard about before. For CBU TV, I am Ivania Montes. Thanks, Ivania. We are starting a new segment here on CBU TV called What's Going On in the World? A quick segment where we give you the headlines of major events that have happened and are happening in the world. So let's get into it. To start, California Governor Gavin Newsom is to stay in office as voters overwhelmingly voted to reject the recall. Haitians are seeking refuge at the Texas border. As Haitian migrants flee from from political crisis, the public has criticized the Texas Border Patrol and President Biden's administrations on their decisions. The founder of Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, began trial in San Jose, California. She faces 12 counts of fraud and wire conspiracy. If convicted, she could face up to 20 years in prison. Gabby Petito's body was located in Wyoming National Park near the Grand Tetons. Petito's death has been ruled a homicide by the coroner. An arrest warrant has been issued for Gabby's boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. California reported the lowest coronavirus cases in the United States. For a final story, CBU TV reporter Brett Rosen met with Spiritual Life to discuss the future of chapel here at CBU. Hey Lancers, my name is Brett Rosen from CBU TV, and today I had the pleasure of sitting with Brett Val, the director of chapel. I got to speak with him about what the future chapel will look like amidst this pandemic. Well, I think first of all would be that um, when we are able to move back an in-person chapel that will follow all the protocols established by the university. But I think preceding that is just the fact that we won't move back into in-person chapels until certain state level restrictions have been listed, uh, especially those that concerning like um, indoor 
indoor gatherings of a thousand more people. So until those restrictions are lifted by the state, then there, then we won't be even be moving back into into the in-person chapel setting. With that very insightful answer by Brett Val about how spiritual life is to ensure students' safety when coming back to in-person chapel, I then asked them if there is a capacity limit. What would that capacity limit number look like? Unfortunately, it's just kind of one one or the other. Just since our chapels are built into the academic schedule, we're restricted by schedule and also just by the venues that we have on campus. So it's either we're able to return to full capacity in-person chapel or we'll continue in online. So right now, these are our only two options. Okay. After the answer by Brett Val about the capacity number of in-person chapel, I then go on to ask my final question of how this year's chapel will be different than years past. For, um, for students that have only been here the past couple of years, I mean, going back to what chapel has been prior to March 2020, I mean, our programming will be very similar to what it was back at that time, which will be very new to the freshman class, the sophomore class. So not a lot of change for upperclassmen. They'll recognize this is very similar to what we've programmed chapel to be in the past with Purpose Worship as our worship team, uh, the guest speakers coming, John Montgomery as the campus pastor uh, being on stage. So it looks similar to what it had been for March 2020. But again, a lot of students, that'll be a whole new experience. For CBU TV, I am Brett Rosen. Well, that's all we have for you this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and follow us on Instagram. For CBU TV, I'm Hannah Tudor. And I'm Matt Stump. And we'll see you next time.